Hello friends, thank you so much for sharing your time with us once again. My name is Jessie. If you are brand new here, welcome. If you are returning, I'm so, so grateful to have you here. Within the next two episodes, we have some really fun things planned. I'm going to be showing you how I take a simple dishcloth and turn it into a vintage inspired stocking. We'll also be doing some actual decorating inside of the house and we will be making a really beautiful, simple felt embroidered ornament which would be perfect for a gift for anybody in your life as well as obviously decorations to hang on your Christmas tree or garland. So if you're ready to go let's get started with the day. As of late, we've added a few new additions to the homestead. We normally have about four batches of chicks that hatch each season, but for whatever reason, one of the hens decided to go broody at this time of year, which is something brand new for us, but we just decided to let her do her thing. Here are a few of them. I won't bore you too much with our farm life, but if that's something you're interested in hearing more about, just let me know in the comments section and I can definitely add more if enough people are interested. I just wanted to take a brief second to say how much I am overwhelmed with gratitude and thankfulness that y'all have supported me so much. Ever since I was a little girl, design has been a passion for me. I remember painting my room and redecorating it over and over again when I'd ask for things for Christmas. Most years, it would revolve around the redecorating of my room. I really had no idea what I was doing. I just knew that it brought me joy. And still to this day, I feel the very same way about it. That said, for so many years, I was trying to find ways that I could share my passion with other people hoping that I would be able to maybe ignite something in their hearts or be able to help them create a space that brings them the same comfort that our space brings us. The problem was that I had so much doubt and reservations about it. I was so fearful that it would be a failure or I would fall flat on my face and I really just allowed all of those negative voices to take over and really just became paralyzed by fear. It obviously wasn't until recently that I worked up enough courage to make my first video and post it. I remember looking at the view count to see if anybody would be interested and seeing that 13 people had viewed my first video at one point. And honestly, I was just so overwhelmed and excited by that, that anybody would click on my video or be willing to watch it was surprising to me. All that mumbling to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you so, so much. Thank you for your feedback. I very much am taking it all into consideration. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you for simply sharing your time with me and i look forward to continuing to grow this community and hopefully we will inspire each other along the way with that said if you'd like to see more of my content i would greatly appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button and if you'd like to be notified go ahead and hit that bell um and if this is a video that you enjoyed i would not complain a bit if you would go ahead and bump that like button as well. And also I'd like to hear from you too. So leave a comment below, any suggestions, any questions you may have, maybe where I got something or how I made something or anything like that. I will do my best to get back with you. <music> garland there are a million and one options for it a million and one ways to hang it make it display it 
you name it, I've probably tried it. For years, I've stuck with fresh everything. We still do our wreaths fresh as well as our actual tree, which stay tuned as we go to the tree farm, we'll be taking you along with us and decorating it once we bring it back. So I've recently converted to using faux garland. One of the bigger reasons why is that it's very easy to manipulate it. I found when I used fresh garland, I wasn't able to get the look that I was really striving to achieve. Another big issue is that it sheds, it dries out, it doesn't always last the whole season, and it can be super expensive. I knew many of you would probably wonder where I purchased this garland from, so I went back to make sure that it was still available, but unfortunately it's not. I was really sad to find this out because I was really wanting to purchase more, but I did find another kind that I have ordered, and if I like it, I will definitely let you know where it's from but the last thing I want to do is recommend something to you that isn't good. I will say in the past that I have made both a, my own fresh strand and faux strands of garland for fresh. I've actually went to my local tree farm and asked if they had any scraps and they allowed me to go through them and all I did was take pieces of floral wire and wire them together. I've also when I was really desperate went to my local big box store purchased one of their trees and I cut it apart and wound together the limbs with the floral wire as well. If you're looking for faux and you can't find a strand long enough or a strand at all, sometimes it can be easier to find individual picks at craft stores. And if you happen upon some that you like, don't be afraid to grab as many as you need and use the same floral wire and tie those together in the same way. Okay, so don't get me wrong here. I don't think you could ever use too much garland when it comes to decorating for the holidays. But one of the things that I prefer is to make sure that your garland for the most part matches. For instance, if you happen to like flocked greens or have both green and flocked garlands, wreaths, or Christmas tree, it has the potential to look a little disjointed if you put them side by side. One of the things that I recommend if you enjoy both of them is grouping them together in different rooms. This ensures that your entire look is completely cohesive. So one conundrum I had faced throughout the years when it comes to hanging garland is what exactly I hang my garland with. I've tried everything from fish and line to floor wire. I don't mind floor wire that much except the problem is is that I find that it normally scratches whatever surface that I am wrapping it around. Hands down I have found that pipe clean work best. They come in a variety of colors that will match either your garland or the surface that you are wrapping it around. They will not scratch and they are very pliable and easy to use and of course affordable. I've got a few more garland tips in my back pocket so if you would like to hear any more just give me a shout or if you happen to have any yourself I'd love to hear and we as a community can all bond over garland. My holiday decorating approach this year was to go for a look that was very classic and subdued. I know that Christmas time has a tendency to be a bit chaotic, so the last thing I wanted to do when I walk into my home is feel the same way. That said, I wanted to create a space that was very calming, relaxing, and inviting. And so that's why I kind of went with this almost monochromatic color scheme. If you happen to catch my video where I decorated this area for last season, you'll see that I have base pieces that almost never change. For instance, the frame is the same one. I simply tipped it sideways and added a more wintry themed piece of art and the large pot is almost always present as well. I rummaged my house and I found a few books that matched the color scheme that I was going with. Same thing with the candle and then added a branch, which that's something that you can go outside and clip, or craft stores normally have branches or dried twigs available as well. 
And for the paper stars, you can either make your own, but for me this year, I decided to save a little time and I found mine at West Elm. I've seen them around everywhere, so they're pretty accessible. For the final touch, you know I love to add as many natural elements as possible. We have an infinite number of deer that surround us, so Blake was actually on a walk on our land last year and this is one of the antlers that he's found. Just makes it that much more special, but if you don't happen to have antlers available a lot of times vintage and antique stores are the best place to find natural ones So they're decorating the Christmas tree with a star up top for you and me. Can you hear the sleigh bells? It's Christmas time. It's Christmas time. Way up north, they're making toys for every little girl and boy who mailed in letters because they've been better, so much better than the year before. Santa's crossing off every wish Even moms and dads have made the list Can you hear the sleigh bells? It's Christmas time The sound of sleigh bells on reindeer Only come this time of year With Dasher, Dancer, Prancer and Fish and
All right, I hope y'all really enjoyed that DIY. I was really inspired this year. I've been seeing a lot of felt and embroidered ornaments, and I thought it would be a really fun and simple idea to make our own. Speaking of DIYs, if y'all remember or watched my last episode, you will be aware of this last one that we have done made out of brown paper bags. Every single year we make more of them to add to the collection. Normally we hang them on the windows and they look really pretty with the light behind them and coming through. But this year we've got new plans for the additions. As you can see, we're making our way up the stairway and up to the second floor foyer. I knew I wanted to do something to the upstairs banisters this year, and I thought these paper snowflakes would be the perfect touch. I just thought it would be a really beautiful grand statement to be able to look up and see these really beautiful, simple snowflakes hanging from the railings. I almost used ribbons to hang them, but ultimately I wanted to give the effect that they were just Floating, so I simply thread fishing line through a hole that I made and I tied them up onto the railing using that. For me, it's those final finishing touches and last details that really add to the feel of the room and ultimately tie the entire look together. By simply throwing a textured cozy blanket over a chair, hanging bells that have been tied together using beautiful ribbon, or by displaying handmade or passed down pieces that have been filled with love and memories from times past. All are simple ways to make your house feel like a home this holiday season. In the end, it's not about the way it looks or whether somebody else finds beauty in it. In my opinion, successful design is design that creates a feeling of eagerness to return and an overwhelming sense of being welcomed when you do.